A day in the life of a fool A sad and a long, lonely day I walked the avenue You see, at one time, we used to cut hair with a comb and with a scissor. You know, they say that a barber's chair is like a confessional, or sometimes uh, people come to, you know, just to have advice and stuff. They just, they just say what they feel, and, uh, and in that sense, we have a chance and opportunity to do good to people as well, you know, give them encouragement, you know, moral support, even sometimes spiritual support. There were so many nice songs. There were so many Italian songs, too, that were nice. Uh, uh, Ti invidio, another one goes, Ti invidio turista che arrivi, tembevi de fuori e de scavi, poi tutto d'un colpo te trovi, fontana de trevi, sei tutta per me, ci sta una leggenda romana, legata a sta vecchia fontana, ci butto un sordino, legato destino de fatti torna, arrivi. Arriva derci Roma, goodbye, goodbye to Rome. Si ritrova a spasso in carrozzella e ricorda quella ciumaghella che era tanto bella e che ci ha detto sempre no. Sì, l'incontro che papà ha avuto con Pavarotti è stata una cosa stripitosa, una cosa che capita raramente, soprattutto a una persona che piace tanto il canto, piace tanto gli, i musicisti, i, i gran cantori come Pavarotti. We have uh, that uh, big pole, you know, that turns around, you know, it used to turn around and used to be red blue and white and why why was it red blue and white because at one time they so-called barber they they used to do all kinds of things not only that they used to cut hair but they used to abstract tooth and whatever and the red means the blood because they weren't that uh, professional you see so they were pulling with a string and sometime that poor customer uh, i mean he was sorry he went for a haircut and at the same time they fixed up his tooth you see what i mean so that was in the olden days, the, this whole thing. So it remains, it remains that even today, to show that uh, we do cut men's hair, the, the, the only thing that personifies it well, it's the, uh, that, that, that uh, how do you call it, that cylinder that goes round and round, you know? <laughs> it's, like, it's like the song, round and round, and it goes round, round, round. <laughs> Sometimes Perry Como used to sing it that way. Says John, he goes, I sang with Pavarotti, Luciano Pavarotti. I said, but how, how could that be? And uh, he said, well, he told me the, 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 um, the scenario, how it happened uh, in New York City uh, at the park. He was singing with his friends and uh, Pavarotti was in his limo and, and it was summer. He, I guess he had his window down and he overheard him sing Umazzo in di Fiori. And uh, I had the limo stopped and rushed outside and accompanied him singing. And my father said, you know, I got my 15 minutes of fame. He says, although he goes, I wasn't really looking for fame, but he says to have sang alongside Pavarotti, he says, John, it, it, it was uh, the most touching thing uh, that I've ever experienced besides, you know, maybe getting married or something of that nature. My God, the, the back of his neck was atrocious. And he turns to my father and he says, uh, can you do something with this? So my dad said, please do sit down here and uh, I'll see what I could do with you. So the man sat down. My father started to 
cut the hair with those scissors that they were like violins, all right? I mean to say that uh, he was cutting hair so beautifully that this man was uh, looking at him the way, the way he was going at it because my dad was putting all his passion uh, to it. And uh, short thing, when everything was finished, he took the mirror and he showed him what he had done. And trust me, there was no more holes. There was nothing. And uh, oh my God, this man looked at him and he said, from now on, you shall attend to me. Now, when somebody tells you that, you don't say nothing. You, who's that man there, you see? Beh, veramente quello che penso io è un, è un come Johnny, perché è una persona che ascolta, che capisce i tuoi bisogni e che cerca di realizzarli. Quindi esci soddisfatta e contenta di quello che ti fa. Perché appunto è l'ascolto che è molto importante, di capire cosa il cliente vuole. A big fashion show in Chinatown, rich dudes, they had hired us because, you know, we, 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 already were, we had a bit of fame, you know, we were a bit known there and they, they hired us to do all the models and they had these, these models from China, beautiful women, and they thought we were gay, right? Hairdressers, that we were like gay hair, because they, they assumed that. So yeah, us were, we're doing hair backstage and they didn't know really, we're, we're, we're two wolves. And we're seeing that, and we, we lost all our profession, our, our, <laughs> like we're freaking out, we're both free, we were so immature, we're like free. I, I'm looking at him, he's looking at me, and we're like, do you believe this? We're in heaven, we died, we're, we died, we're here. We're in heaven, and like there are all these women, these beautiful women, we're like, holy, we, we couldn't, we're shaking, doing hair, we couldn't, we couldn't do the freaking, a stupid montage, we couldn't do it no more, you know, it, it, was, it, was, it was like that, that was funny. He stepped out of the chair and, and he slapped my father, <laughs> I slap you too, <laughs> in, a friend, in a friendly way. And short thing, uh, he told him, he said, uh, he said, tomorrow I got a present for you. I like you very much and you shall attend for me the rest of my life. And as he turned out to walk out of the place, two German soldiers happened to come in. Well, when these people came in, when they saw this gentleman, they stood to the attention, hi Hitler, and my God, uh, you think that the floor was going to crack. And by all means, as he stepped out, of course, my father went out and see these two soldiers, and he asked them, uh, but who's the man? They practically got insulted uh, that he had asked the question, but he said, they, they're dressed in civil, I mean, how can I know who the man is? And so they told him, they said that General Rommel, my father was extremely, extremely, he, he didn't know <laughs> to believe it or what, but nevertheless, that was the story. But the following day, the following day, at noon hour, like uh, Rommel had said to my father that he was going to have a present for him, there was a bombardment, and, but at 12 o'clock noon, this jeep stopped right in front of the salon, they came in with a box and they put it on my father's desk and they said the uh, compliment of General Rommel, hi Hitler, and they, giras volta, it's, they came out. They came out of the salon, so my father was all impressed with all this, so he goes out in the box to find out what it was all about. And sure thing, you know what was in there? You want to know what was in there? It was unreal. There were, the box was full with Lucky Strike cigarettes. Now, how do you like that? Lucky Strike cigarette in those days, okay? My father sold them two by two, and we were able to eat the rest of our lives. The rest of, uh, I mean to say, the rest of the war, I should say, excuse me.